this is our first lecture topic the course ABE 161 the topic title is introduction to agricultural buildings and construction okay so first we'll we'll define first what's um, what is an agricultural and biosystems buildings and structures the best way to to define that is through the Republic Act 10915 section 4d okay so I have a copy here Okay, so it says that agricultural buildings, uh, agricultural and biosystems uh, buildings and structures refer to buildings and structures for the production, harvesting, processing, storage, manufacture, preserving, transporting, and distribution of agricultural and biological products or materials and includes but it's not limited to silos and its components. Okay, so we'll discuss this one by one. When we say silos and its components. By the way, um, the Republic of 10915, this is also known as the um, Philippine Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering Act of 2016. Okay, so um, in its section 40, it defines this, um, the types of agricultural buildings or the description of what an agricultural and biosystems building structures are. Okay, so one of which it says we have silos and its components. Okay, so number one, let's say we have silos. Okay, silos. Now for the silos, actually silos is um, one method of storing your material. So the material typically would be, let's say, grains or any durable products. So when you say durables, uh, you're referring to a product from an agricultural engineering perspective that can be stored longer or it has a characteristics, um, something like that of the grains so as compared to the perishables so perishables those are fruits vegetables whereas this one durables you know they can last longer okay so silos are one way to store this uh, grains or feed materials basically they're just a cylindrical tank Okay, so if it looks like this, so they are large cylindrical tanks for in uh, you store the materials. So of course, in order to convey the material from, uh, let's say from the floor line to to the top of this tank, then must have some uh, material material handling equipment so example it could be a bucket elevator okay so the material is loaded on this side and then it is transported up and then another material handling equipment should be provided so that um, can be transported to various tanks okay so sometimes it's a series of tanks uh, cylindrical tanks on a let's say rice mill area okay so 
the material is loaded inside and then of course there's going to be an angle of repose okay so it is stored there for let's say several months or depending upon the need and then the way to to let's say discharge it maybe in whole or or in part then there must be um, let's say right here okay so there must be some example a screw conveyor for example okay, it can be inclined or I don't know maybe horizontal so a screw conveyor is also a material handling equipment that conveys by the rotation of screws okay so the material will uh, will move from here to here okay so the design of silos actually it's not just about the strength although of course the strength is the is probably an important aspect but of course we also have to provide the functional requirements like for example when you say storage then you have to to provide the uh, the optimum environment in terms of temperature or let's say the relative humidity and also since this is um, a biological materials especially it's a food and f or feed then it is, it is also prone to the attacks of let's say rodents and birds so it must have some controls on, uh, on this uh, attack of birds and, and rodents okay so where do you find this so sometimes in an uh, let's say a rice mill a rice mill compound or a rice mill area then sometimes you would see that there are some um, silos at the back or some area uh, in the vicinity okay. okay so that's one silos and its components okay so the next one is agriculture and bind systems machinery and equipment sheds okay so let's write it here machinery and equipment sheds okay so basically it's just a shed to enhouse the agricultural implements or agricultural tractors so for example uh, let's try it this way then inside there's a tractor okay or let's say uh, a combined harvester so it is also possible Okay, so the question is, why do you, why do we need to in-house this equipment? Um, it's simply because we need, we, uh, we need to protect them from direct sunlight or direct rain. Because if they are exposed uh, to direct sunlight and rains, then they'll just depreciate faster. Okay, so depreciate in terms of their lifespan, and of, of course. Uh, that is also equivalent to uh, or that would equate to cost as well so it is necessary to to provide a housing or a shed something so that you can uh, park it uh, park it safely when it's not in use or if you do repair and maintenance it's also um, beneficial okay so now let's move on to the next building okay uh, farmhouses so um, basically farmhouses when you say farmhouses it just refers to human dwellings so uh, we're not gonna delve much to the details of this yes this is very uh, intuitive what it is okay so farmhouses although this doesn't uh, specify if it's 
a one story or two story or three but uh, let's just leave it that way for now and because um, higher stories or two stories and up require structural analysis so let's just leave it like that for now okay so number four we have greenhouses okay so greenhouses they're actually uh, structures for for plant production or for plant growth the characteristic feature of these greenhouses are, are they are actually designed like for example full type structure so it's basically c com comprises of comprises of hoops okay so this hoop steel hoops for example and then it is overlaid with uh, with nets and plastics okay so there's nets here And also there, there there's a plastic cover so sometimes it's designed in a way that you can roll up or roll down the these plastic nets or uh, I mean these plastics and these nets so the, the role of these nets is actually to prevent a direct uh, direct action of sunlight to the plants because uh, it can it can burn up the plants although plants needs light sunlight but the wreck action could uh, could result to uh, let's say they can burn out or I mean they can they can dry it, they can be dried up okay so the design of this also can be uh, I mean it can be designed in a way that the environment can be controlled so they, they call it controlled environment so there's uh, ventilation fans on ventilation fans on this end for example okay and other system components like for example evaporative cooling pads on one end so it's about providing so if we if we summarize it and say greenhouses then the point here is to provide um, an environment an, an environment or enclosure that is favorable to plant growth so that's it and of course since that's plants then there must have some uh, irrigation supply so water supply inside and then there's also a way to uh, remove the excess water so that's let's say irrigation and then another one is the removal of water is uh, drainage so irrigation um, we have also I mean in the course in our program EPE program we, we have a, a course devoted for this irrigation and drainage systems so we have for example sprinklers systems uh, drip irrigations what else and many others okay so for us here we'll just focus on the structural aspects since our course uh, this course is agricultural structures engineering okay so let's move on to the next topic I mean next uh, building Okay, so poultry houses and piggery houses. Okay, so that's number five. So let's say poultry and livestock. So it's actually similar to to greenhouses in a way that um, when you design a poultry and livestock building, then you have to provide uh, a thermal environment that is conducive for 
for for livestock growth. Okay, so for example, uh, this is the housing, and then let's say this is a broiler housing. Okay, so livestock and poultry they have a thermal uh, thermoneutral zone. So the term is thermal neutral zone so they'll be productive uh, I mean you can get the best out of it if you provide the correct thermal as a correct temperature for for them so it's just a range so if the inter environment is too too high then the the life second pole and poultry can 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 die of heat stress if it's too cold then they can die of of cold stress okay so the goal in designing this uh, livestock and poultry housing is to provide the uh, indoor environment okay correct indoor environment of course one aspect of designing is the structural aspects so that's already given so in terms of strength whereas indoor environment so let's say this is uh, these are aspects of building designs so in their environment so you have to provide uh, let's say that the ventilation system so so if we install the ventilation fans and on the other side for example and evaporative cooling pads so uh, in that way let's say the outside temperature is let's say 35 degrees C or 30 degrees C but Let's say the optimum temperature would be let's say around 25 degrees C then how would you do that how would you maintain this so that is why some systems like uh, tunnel ventilated poultry housings uh, they are designed to to have that one to have this evaporative systems okay so there's a course also after this um, ABE 161 after you take this there's another course that deals with um, the indoor environmental control for both uh, livestock housings and uh, I think greenhouse okay so uh, let's move on to the next uh, building is a slaughterhouse okay so this is already number six Okay, so slaughterhouse is basically a processing processing facility. So from the production of swine, let's say from the swine housing, uh, the swines are harvested and then they are converted to meat. So the way to convert the, those swines, those uh, live swines into meat, should undergo processes. Um, basically the slaughter uh, slaughtering processes okay so let's draw a swine for example hmm. I don't know if it looks like a swine but that's it that's the point uh, this is the input and the output would be the meat all right okay, although may not be sliced that way I mean probably ready for slicing or farther slicing okay so the process is um, this slaughterhouse structure is a processing facility so, so when I say processing facility then uh, sanitary uh, process or let's say hygienic design must be, con uh, must be considered because this is for food production Okay, so there's a lot of processes that uh, that goes inside. So let's say one process is stunning. Okay, so before before the swine is uh, killed, then it must be stunned to render the animal unconscious. Okay, and then after that, then there's gonna be a bleeding process so to 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 bleed out 
and then um, let's say probably I think that's after this is the hay ring so it goes to another machine for um, for the hay ring and then probably uh, evisceration or something like that okay we'll check this out the uh, evisceration so the removal of the internal uh, internal internal parts of the swine okay and then after that it goes to uh, let's say scalding so scalding is basically dipping the uh, the this swine into a a hot water okay and then after that probably some I don't know maybe some other process but we'll check this we'll check this later okay so there's a lot of equipments involved okay so I don't know how to draw that so probably this these are the the hearing equipment and then this is the swine so it just rolls here and then it dehairs then after that probably the evisceration process okay and then of course it must have some overhead rail systems and then the scalding process so there must be a uh, something like a a container or Or a scalding uh, scalding bath okay so there's a lot of process going on here okay so next is uh, farm to market roads and bridges Okay, so farm to market roads. Um, the difference between these roads to the other roads is that, you say farm to market roads. The main goal is to provide a, a road from the field to the nearest, uh, let's say, barangay roads. Okay, so the goal of farm to market roads is to actually to speed up the delivery of the agricultural products from the field to the market. Okay, so um, we have also bridges like for example if there's need to have a bridge then uh, that's also included but of course if you compare the size of these of these roads to other roads like for example highways or uh, or expressways so this is very small compared to to those roads okay and then what's next um, storage and warehouse okay farm bridges storage and warehouse that's number I think number eight so like I've said earlier about the uh, silos uh, storage warehouse they're actually also designed to, um, to store the durables or also perishables okay so for for the grains their example is a bag storage warehouse where you store the paddy or the rice in sacks Okay, so there must be a maximum stacking height and uh, standards on the distances between the let's say the walls and then the the aisles here and it's also possible to design a warehouse where the forklift for example can can enter the building okay so in stocking we use pallets 
a uh, it's a wooden pallet and there is a dimension also um, dimension that is prescribed in in pies okay so depending upon the products then the stacking height actually matters I mean differs okay like for example also in uh, let's say onion or jute bags so it has a different stacking stacking height uh, provisions okay so again the main goal for storage warehouse for this bag storage warehouse is to provide an enclosure um, so that we can uh, we can store the materials for a longer time so in that so meaning that we also have to provide uh, pest controls say the bird grills or the rodents uh, rodent steps okay so for the perishables actually the storage of perishables requires a much lower temperature compared to the durable so for example onions are around 2 degrees C and the outside temperature is let's say 35 degrees C then of course the design in order to bring this 35 degrees C to 20 or to 2 degrees C then you have to provide a refrigeration equipment okay so it's not just ventilation but rather refrigerations refrigeration systems okay so if that's the refrigeration systems then we also have to have some insulated walls okay so that's per room so let's say one room that's one product then another room another product for example okay so each room is equipped with refrigeration uh, systems so that you can control let's say another um, another room is intended for let's say um, leafy vegetables so of course it has a different storage temperatures requirement okay so I don't know how much this is but the point here is we just have to look at the codes or standards that says the temperature the required temperature for storage okay so the next one is we have fishery and forestry production uh, production and processing okay so we have this eight this is already nine and then ten okay so for the fishery um, we're talking about let's say earth puns or or puns for I mean puns with linings or designed in a concrete type structures or other systems like for example the raceway systems so if you have if you have already taken the course on aquaculture engineering then it talks about um, different I mean one of the topic is the different systems for fishery production okay so we're not talking a small scale like aquarium here we're, we're talking about uh, a big one okay so for the forestry production and processing basically this is just the same as the shed because if you have a shed then it's just what matters or what differs is the equipment that you put inside so for forestry production you just have kiln drying equipment uh, lumber treatments number treatment structures um, and many other equipment that may be necessary for this uh, lumber production or maybe bamboo bamboo production uh, I mean bamboo processing sorry okay so another one is a farm supplies and the last one is the soil and water structure so I think this is already 9, 10, 11, 12. So probably this is 12. So the soil and water conservation structures. Okay, so I'd like to highlight this because, for example, um, we have a plot, 
a rice field area. So, so this is the main irrigation canal, and then we have uh, an area here, a rice area. Okay, so in order to, I mean, it's a basic necessity for a plant to to require a water supply. Okay, so again, water supply, just like what we said in greenhouses. So we, we must have some input water, and that refers to irrigation. And then there must be some outlet waters. Okay, and that's uh, let's say drainage. Okay, so the the design of these canals. Okay, so, so it could be let's say uh, the canal would be a trapezoidal canal, open channels, um, whatever type. Okay, so that's that's uh, um, what the soil water conservation structures is all about okay so another one is for example the sweep small water impounding project okay so for water conservations uh, these are the types of the structures for this soil and water conservation all right so in the next lecture we'll we'll discuss the codes and then the remaining topics on this um, topic number one. See you in the next video.